Okay, Spartans, we are going to go over the percent test 3-1 review. And let me get my little friend out of the way. Woo. And here goes number one. On Friday, 72% of the customers ordered vanilla frozen yogurt. If 250 customers placed orders on Friday, how many customers ordered vanilla frozen yogurt? Okay, what we're going to be using is our little best friend proportion uh, percent table. So remember, all percents are out of 100. And if you have 100%, that means you have the whole or the total amount. And the percent you're talking about is just part of the whole amount. So we're going to set up our numbers from the scenario here into this table. All right, here I go. Oh, I'll do it over here. So I got my 72% out of 100. And I know there's 250 total customers. And what they're asking for is how many ordered vanilla yogurt. That wasn't everybody. That was just 72%. Okay, I'm trying to see the relationship between 72 and 100. I don't see any way to multiply or divide friendly between these two numbers or the 100 and the 250. But I could make my 100 reduce down if I cut it in half to 50. Now 50 is a friendlier number to get to 250. 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. That would be five times bigger. So what I did to the 100, I divided by two and I got 50. I'm gonna have to take 72 divided by two. Let's see what that is. Two fits into seven three times. Three times two is six. I got one left, bring down the two. Two fits into 12 six times. So my top number becomes 36. Now to travel across this way, it had to get five times bigger. So I'm gonna have to take my 36 and times it by five. I got some room here. 36 times five. Six times five is 30. Carry the three. Three times five is 15 plus three more, 16, 17, 18. So my answer in that blank is 180. Another option that, it takes a lot of work, but you can do this. It's called cross multiply and divide. So you set up your proportion table with your percents and you find the numbers that are cross from each other like this and you multiply them. 250 times 72. Now this takes a little bit of work, but if you ever get stuck, it's a good way out. Two times zero is zero. Two times five is 10, carry the one. Two times two is four, plus one more is five. Okay, I'm gonna lay my placeholder egg because I'm done with the two, moving over to the seven. Seven times zero is zero. Seven times five is 35, carry the three. 2 times 7 is 14, plus 3, 15, 16, 17. There we go. Now when I add these together, I get 0, 0, 10, carry the 1, 7 plus 1 is 8, and 1. So I get 18,000. Then, that's cross multiply right here, then I have to divide by what's left over, which in this case is 100. Now this is easy because I can do it like this. 18,000 divided by 100. Then I could cancel out my extra zeros here and here, and I get 180 divided by one, which equals 180. So whichever way you prefer, there you go. Okay, let's move on to number two. Turn this over. Okay, <clears throat> homework was given over the four day weekend. It wasn't, but I thought it'd be a good math problem. If 525 sixth grade students were assigned the homework and 80% turned it in, how many students did not turn it in? Okay, here's where you need to be careful. 80% turned it in out of 100. That means 20% did not turn it in. They're looking for that 20%. So I'm gonna use the 20% to help me solve it. Here's my table, 20% out of 100. Now 525 sixth grade students were assigned the homework. Is that part or is that whole? That is the whole amount. 
525. We're looking for the ones that did not turn it in, the 20% that did not. That's the part. Okay, now here, this is kind of nice. Let me switch colors so you can see the difference. If I have these extra zeros on the edge, I could cross them off. And then look at this. How does 2 get to 10? 2 times 5 is 10. Well, then how does 10 get back to 2? The opposite. We divide by 5. What you do to one side, do to the other. 525 divided by 5. So I'm going to make my little house over here. 525 divided by 5. 5 fits into 5 one time. 1 times 5 is 5. I have nothing left. Bring down my next digit, which is a 2. Now over this 2 goes my next answer. How many 5s fit into 2? It can't. It won't fit. So then here's a shortcut. I can bring down my next number, 5, and above the 5 goes my next answer. How many 5s fit into 25? That would be 5. So my answer was 105. <clears throat> will the cross multiply and divide work here? I, yes, it will. You can still cross off the zeros if you want to get smaller numbers. Then what I do, oh, let me switch colors, sorry. Let's go red. Then what I'm going to do is multiply what's crisscross from each other. 525 times 2. 525, double that. 2 times 5 is 10, carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, and 2 times 5 is 10. So I get 1,050. Then I have to divide by what's left over here. Now remember, we crossed off the 0, so what's left over is a 10. So if I take 1,050 divided by 10, see how the zeros are on the end? I can do this again. And 105 divided by 1 is 105. Same answer. Okay, let's take a look at number three. Get this out of the way. <clears throat> Says the drill team has 50 dancers performing at the football game. 35 of the dancers are wearing hats for the performance. What percentage is equivalent to 35 out of 50? Well, I just make my table like this. 35 out of 50. But they're asking what percent, and we know all percents are not out of 50, they're out of 100. So how did 50 get to 100? It did a times 2. So what you do to the bottom, do to the top. 35 times 2, or you can just add 35 plus 35, whichever you prefer. I get 10, carry the 1, 6 plus 1 is 7. I get 70 for this space, which would be 70 out of 100, 70%. Ta-da! All right, let me switch back to blue. It says a recent survey showed that 8% of all 6th grade students are on their phones more than 6 hours a night. Ooh, they're not getting any sleep. <coughs> How is 8% expressed as a decimal and a simplified fraction? Well, to get from a percent to a decimal, remember P, D? That was police department where we go back it up, back it up. We back it up two spaces. Now at 8%, the decimal, there is no decimal, so it's at the back here. So if I go back it up, back it up, I've got that blank, which would be 0 0.08. And of course, you know all percents are out of 100, and 8% 8 is 8 one hundredths, and this 8 in the decimal is in the tenths, hundredths place. So 8 in the hundredths, 8 one hundredths, 8%, dun, 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 except for they want it simplified. So let's reduce 8 and 100. If you cut it in half, you'll get 4 and 50. They're both even numbers, so I can cut them in half again. I get 2 and I get 25. There's our final reduced fraction, 2 25ths. All right, on to number 5. Let's this up. <clears throat> okay, let's go green. A survey was taken of 630 people, sorry. A survey was taken of 630 people who watched the Super Bowl last year. Out of all those people surveyed, 210 enjoyed the halftime performance. Performance. Which statement shows values that are equivalent to the fraction of people that enjoyed the halftime performance? Well, I know 210 is the part out of 630 the total. 
So 210 goes on top, A is out, C is out. 210's on top, 630 on the bottom, 210's on top, 630 on the bottom. Let me zoom into that a little bit. Scoop. There we go. Okay, now my answer choices are somewhere between B and D. What I'm going to do is cross off these zeros, and I get 21 over 63. Cross off those zeros, I get 21 over 63. Now on answer B, 2163 matches the 2163. But does 21 over 63 match 21 in the hundreds place? Or does it match 21%, which would be 21 out of 100? Most people think they match because the top number matches, but look at the bottom number. Does 63 match the 100s? It does not, so that cannot be a good answer. Let's check D. 21 and 63 and 1 and 3. Now how does 1 get to 21? Times 21. And is 3 times 21? 63? Let's find out. 21 times 3. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. So yes, these two match. Now, does 1 third match 0.3 with the forever hat? Yes, it does. And then if I take 0.3 3, 3, 3 with a forever hat, and I Dr. Pepper it, changing that decimal to a percent, I get 33.3 .3 forever hat, which is the same thing as 33 and one third percent. So the one that truly matches is D. Don't get fooled here. We eliminated two that were easily eliminated, and then we were down to these two. This almost tricked a lot of people, but be careful. This was the correct answer. All right, number six. <clears throat> Braden and his trains. Dra Braden owns 45 trains. Let me scoot this up. Of these trains, 20% are smaller than 8 inches, and 80% are 8 inches or more. Complete the statement about the trains Braden owns. Place the correct answer in each box. Not all answers will be used. Well, I didn't give you any choices, so that should be gone. Sorry, meant to take that out. Okay, so number six. Braden owns how many trains that are smaller than eight inches? Well, I know he owns 45 total trains. That is 100% of his trains. I know 20% are smaller than eight inches. So I've got to figure out what this number is. <coughs> Excuse me. I can take out the zeros, and I see two times five is 10, so 10 divided by five is two. What's 45 divided by 5? That equals 9. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Yep, it equals 9. So I know 9 of his trains are smaller than 8 inches. And he's got 45 trains total. That must mean all the rest are more than 8 inches. So if I take 45 total trains minus the tiny trains, borrow from the 4, it becomes a 3. 15 minus 9 is 6. I get 36, so we got 36 trains that are more, 8 inches or more. <clears throat> All right, Channing, you're up. Let me go bleh for Channing. There you go. Channing checked the amount of change on his, or amount of charge, I cannot read, sorry. Channing checked, that's hard to say, the amount of charge on his computer and saw it only had 40% of the battery life remaining. Which measurement is equal to 40? Another typo. I'm so sorry. 40%. Question mark. Okay, what I know about percents is all percents are out of 100. Then if I, not out of 10, A, you're out. 1 out of 40, you're out. Now, if I reduce 40 and 100, I get 4 tenths. Is that the same as 4 fifths? Or is that the same as two-fifths? It's the same as two-fifths, because if I double it, I get four-tenths. C for Channing and checking his charge on his computer. Ugh, too many Cs. All right, to the back. Ooh, can kind of see through those. I'm going to use my extra copy. There we go. <clears throat> okay, to the back. Go back down. <clears throat> this model is made up of tiny units. Each unit is equal size. 
What percent of the model is shaded? Well, let me count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20, 30. Out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's a 10 times 10, so that's 30 out of 100. And that just up da da da. 30%. All right, number nine. That one was easy. <laughs> I like that one. Okay, number nine. <clears throat> the model is made up of tiny units. Each unit is equal in size. What percentage of the model is shaded? Okay, let's count the shaded. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve are shaded out of how many total? One, two, three, four, five. Five across. One, two, three, four, five down. So five by five, that's 12 out of 25. But we know percents are not out of 25, they're out of 100. 100. Yay, 100. So I'm going to make my 25 build up to 100. How does it get there? Times 25, 50, 75, 100. Times 4. And then I figure what's 12 times 4, and I have my answer. All right, 12 times 4. 2 times 4 is 8, and 1 times 4 is 4, 48, 48%, rock and roll, A. <coughs> Sorry. All right, let's see, what haven't I done? Purple. Number 10. Which number line represents 40%? Okay, the key to number lines is to know how many little spaces are there. So if this is 0, this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is 5 out of 5. So this would be 4 out of 5, 3 out of 5. This would be 2 out of 5. Is 2 out of 5 40%? Hmm. 2 out of 5 is the same as 4 out of 10, which is the same as 40 out of 100, which is 40%. That looks good. Let me check the others to be sure because that's really close. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven, eight. So this would be three eighths, which is not 40%. Three eighths is 0.375. Okay, let me check C. There's zero. Here's one, two, three, and four. So this is two out of four. That's half. That's 50%. So A is the winner. Almost done. <clears throat> All right. Two points are plotted on the number line shown. I'll go back to green. Which values are represented by the points on the number line? Choose two correct answers. All right, make sure we get two of them in here. All right, let me count the dots. Okay, there's zero. So you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is eight out of eight. So you're six out of eight, and you're one out of eight. Ooh, five, six, seven, eight, one eighth. There it is, 0.125. 2 eighths, 0.250, 3 eighths, 0.375, 4 eighths, 0 0.500, 5 eighths, 0.625, 6 eighths, 0 0.750, or just 0.75. All right, I don't see 0.75. Oh, but I know 75 cents is 3 quarters, so there it is. And I know 3 quarters can build up to 6 and 8, just double them, and I get 6 eighths. A and D. All right, I hear Miss Avery's class over there screaming. Can y'all hear him? I wonder. All right, last question. Woohoo! Woohoo! At a local coffee shop, they had 140 customers on Friday morning. If 35 of them ordered a caramel frappuccino, that sounds good, circle all the values that are equivalent to the fraction of customers. Let me get rid of this. Remind me later. I wonder if that will show up in the video. If 35 of them ordered a caramel frappuccino, yum, circle all the values that are equivalent to the fraction of customers who ordered a caramel frappuccino. Okay, so I know that would be 35 customers out of 140. So here's one answer right here. <clears throat> I know this one's wrong. That's backwards. So the top has to be smaller than the bottom, so this one's wrong. 
Okay, I don't know about the one fourth. Okay, I don't know any of these. Don't know. 75 seems big. 400%. That's ridiculous. And four holes? That's ridiculous. Okay, so let's reduce this down. I know 35 can be divided by 5, and that gives me, I'm out of room, 7. And then I got to figure out what's 140. Divide that by 5. 5 can't fit into 1. It fits into 14 twice. That gives me 10. And I have 4 left over. Bring down my next digit. 5 fits into 48 times. So that would be 7 out of 28. 7 out of 28. What did I do wrong? Did I do something wrong? <clears throat> okay. Oh, I forgot my math facts. Ah! 7 and 28 can reduce even further. Look at this. How does 1 get to 7 times 7? And what's 4 times 7? 28. So 1 fourth is the exact same as 7 out of 28. Oh my goodness. So if you get stuck, try to use the answers against the question. All right, 1 fourth is a quarter. A quarter is 25 cents, which is 25%. None of these other guys match, and we are done. All right, so 20 minutes on that. Wow. Good luck on your test. Have a good night.